Okay, in this Blender modeling tutorial, I'm going to show you how to model the Messerschmitt 163 Comet. All right, so the Comet is a very interesting World War II aircraft. It's a rocket-powered aircraft, and it's basically uh, a flying wing with a vertical stabilizer. And it should serve as a very easy subject for beginners learning to model aircraft. Okay, so I've already prepared a couple of images. All right, and uh, I'll be using them as my modeling guides. Now I've got I've gotten these images from the internet, and now I'm going to show you how to bring them in and prepare the images for modeling. Okay, first let's go to Blender, and uh, I'm going to create a dummy. So, or I'm going to create an empty. Okay, create an empty, and then with the empty selected, I'm going to click over here under the object data. And instead of displaying it as plain axes, change it to image. And then go and open the folder containing the image. So I'm going to go to my document folder. Okay, and then I'm going to open the images that I have previously prepared. Okay, so now the images is hidden behind this cube here, so I'm going to press S and I'm going to scale it up. Okay, so now I can see the image displayed very clearly. And the transparency, I'm going to bring it down to about 0.5. Okay, I can just key it in here. And the offset, I'm going to also change it to 0.5 each, both on the X and the Y axis. Or actually, it should be negative 0.5 and negative 0.5. So this is to bring it exactly center to the uh, empty. Okay, for now I'm just gonna delete away this cube. Okay, uh, we can recreate it later on. Okay, and now what you need to do is to position the image planes until they are good for modeling. So let's start by positioning the top view. So in this case, we already have it perfectly centered here. I'm going to press S to just select the uh, MT and then just press S to scale it up until it roughly fills up the uh, entire grid uh, area here. And I'm going to push this top view down okay, in the Z axis. Then I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate another dummy. And then I'm just going to grab the Z manipulator arrow here, bring it up. I'm going to just push it back. Okay. And then I'm just going to rotate this by 90 degrees along the x axis. So you press R followed by X, and then press 9, 0. Okay. Next, what you need to do is just drag this uh, dummy up until you can see the grid. You can see the grid lines intersecting the, uh, the guidelines which I prepared. Okay, now I've used uh, GIMP to prepare the guidelines here. Okay, so now if you want to see a little bit much, uh, a little bit clearly, you just press 1 on your number pad and press 5 to go to, uh, go to orthographic view. You can reduce the transparency further. All right, and then you can use the arrows to adjust until can see the red line it lines up with my red line which I prepared here okay so next we already uh, lined up the front view I'm gonna bring up the transparency back to 0.5 now I'm gonna duplicate another image plane all right so by pressing shift D to duplicate and then I'm gonna just grab the green arrow which is the y-axis and push it out and this time I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees in the z-axis so press R Z Nine zero. So now I can see the side view is oriented towards the x-axis. So the same thing, we're going to switch over to our side view by pressing 3. Then I'm going to grab the manipulator arrow in the z-axis. Drag it down until the green line aligns with the center line of the model. Now you can eyeball this uh, if you don't have the guidelines. Uh, that is uh, perfectly possible but it's always a good idea to make sure that all the dimensions match uh, I'm taking a 
guess here that all these dimensions match because I didn't really didn't really measure the the wing length, uh, but everything looks looks to be uh, about right. Okay, for this uh, image reference. So once you get your references uh, lined up, you can test it out by pressing one, three, and seven on your number pad to make sure that they match. Okay, so now I just want to make sure that my side view and my top view match. So apparently right now if they are not matching, I'm going to just remember your top view can only move in the Z axis. You, you should not move it in the X or Y axis. Now I'm going to select the side uh, image reference. I'm going to drag it until it intersects with the top view. And then I'm going to move it along the Y axis until they match perfectly. So this is essentially how I set up my image planes now. Uh, in the past, I used to use another method called uh, import images as planes, but I found that using the empty and then setting them as image planes is far more flexible, and, and given that you have the ability to control the transparency, that is a great, uh, great added benefit for using this method. Okay, so now I already have my uh, references lined up. Okay, so... Now my side view, is this my side view? Yes. Okay, I just need to push it up just a little bit. Okay. So I can start to model my uh, Messerschmitt now. So this one, I can just push it back. Press Shift A, and then create a cylinder. Okay, you can, you can start from a cube, okay? But the, that means you have to insert more edge loops. But I'm, I'm just going to start from cylinder because generally the, uh, the Messerschmitt 163 has a round tubular shape. Okay, so I'm going to press Shift A and then uh, now make sure your cursor is right at the center. If not, you press Shift C to bring it back to the center. Then press Shift A and then select Mesh, choose Cylinder, and then uh, give it a. For this one, I just I think uh, eight should be enough. Okay, uh, let's see eight. Uh, on second thought, because I need to extract the wings, I need a flat side here. I'm going to increase it to. 12, no, 10. 10 should be fine. Yes. So, now for the... Okay, so uh, the front face is the end gone, but we can change that later in our modeling. So, I'm, I'm going to edit mode by pressing uh, the tab mode, then press number 3 to go to the side view, press Z to go to wireframe view, then press R to rotate 90 degrees until it's lined up with the overall thickness of the plane. Then I'm going to switch over to the front view to make sure that the thickness matches. If it doesn't match, you can just press S to just scale it down until you roughly match the uh, diameter or the circular tubular section section of the plane. Just let's press uh, three to go to back to side view again to make sure that everything matches. And now we want to scale in along the y axis until it matches the length. So we press S followed by Y to scale it up. Okay, so once I scale it up, I'm just gonna move the cylinder and just scale it up until it matches the exact length of the reference drawing. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create this taper here. Now before you do that, you need to find out uh, the sections where you need to insert edge loops. Now, uh, how you see this is uh, basically through experience. From what I can see here, the taper starts around here in this section. So I'm going to press Ctrl R and insert one edge loop right about here. But you can see that uh, th this area is a little bit thicker, so you can go ahead and just press S to scale it up until the top and bottom touches. And then for the tail uh, rocket nozzle here, you can press A to deselect these vertices, press B to drag a box over these vertices. Make sure you're in a uh, wireframe mode, otherwise you won't be able to select the other vertices behind. So press S to scale until, and also with the manipulator uh, transform available, you can just grab the arrows and then just position them in place. Now you can see right here, you need another edge loop to inflate it sort of until it matches the thickness here. So you press Ctrl R to insert another edge loop and uh, right about here maybe, and then just press S to scale it up and just position it until it matches about here. All right. So here you can see a, a piece of metal plate that actually um, sort of blends from the tube to the surface area. We'll come and work on this area later on. 
Okay, right, let's focus our attention here in the cockpit area and also where the wing starts. Okay, so this is the wing root area. So I'm going to press Ctrl R again to insert another edge loop here. Then press S to scale it up until it matches the overall thickness of the aircraft. And uh, maybe one more edge loop here for the wing root that will make the extrusion of our wing out much easier later on. Press Ctrl R again to create another edge loop and then press S to scale it down until it matches the nose cone area. Press A to deselect, press B, box select and drag a box over the nose vertices and press S to scale it down until it forms the nose area here. Okay, so now let's take a look at the front view. And you notice that the uh, the thickness of the aircraft is <coughs> uh, a bit a bit fat, a bit rounded. So we need to scale it down along the sides. So you can press A to select all the vertices, and then press S followed by X to just scale it down until it's got a oval shape. Now at this point in time, we can start to get rid of half of the geometry so that we can apply a mirror modifier so that we just need to work on half this uh, cylinder. So I'm going to press A to deselect. Then I'm going to press Control tab and switch over to face. <coughs> Excuse me. Press B to box select and then select half of the vertices. Okay, so you notice that the Angon uh, caps will be selected as well. So these will be deleted as well. So uh, not to wor worry about it. We're going to cover it up later on. So you can press X and delete away the faces. And then go to the Object Modifiers panel and add a Mirror Modifier. Okay, so now you have a mirrored object. So I've turned it up to shaded mode so you can see the basic tubular shape of the uh, Mesh 163. Okay, so let's start to fine-tune the shape a little bit. Okay, you notice here there's a curvature in the cockpit area here, so it would be a good idea to add another edge loop here. Alright, and perhaps scale it along the z-axis to just bring it up a little. Okay, and there's a curvature along the nose cone here. Press Ctrl R to insert edge loop. Okay, and then you can press scale on the z-axis. Okay. Okay, so now we have the rough shape. Okay, let's make it a little bit uh, tighter here. Notice that there's a round uh, curvature here. It actually narrows down around here. So let's switch over to vertices. Press A to deselect. Press B to box select the bunch of vertices here. And then you can manually move them in until it sort of matches the shape here. Okay, you realize that later on we'll need to insert another edge loop here so they can pull down the uh, the landing skid area here. So you can press Ctrl R, insert another edge loop. Uh, maybe right about here. Okay, and then press A to this line. Grab these vertices and rotate them. And then just bring them down like that, All right? Okay, right about this one, I can just push it up like that. Okay, so now I've sort of got the landing skit here. Let me go to wireframe mode, pressing Z, as uh, A to deselect. Then just fine tune this area here. And perhaps this tail section here, uh, we can sort of like pull these faces here down here. And I'm gonna select this bottom face here. All right. Oh yeah, when you with your mirror applied, uh, do turn on clipping so that both sides are uh, sticking together. So I'm gonna press E to extrude one section here. Then uh, press R to rotate it. Okay. Then press. S to scale it along the Y axis, so S followed by Y, and then just scale it down and then pull it down right about here. Okay, you can insert another edge loop here, Control R, insert one edge loop here, then uh, go to vertex mode, Control Tab vertex mode, press A to deselect, press B to select these uh, vertices here, press G to just 
grab and move them. Okay, so now we got the bottom part done. Okay, so let's do some tweaking here. I'm going to press the uh, forward slash key in the number pad so that I can isolate isolate the uh, model and I can do some t uh, tweaking here. Now it would be a great idea if you can download uh, actual photo references of the actual plane itself. There's plenty of images on the internet and you can study the curves and the uh, how the surfaces flow on this aircraft. Okay, so now I got the uh, tail skid section done. So let's uh, press forward slash again to go back to the uh, with uh, to unisolate the object. Let's go to the side view again, and let's take a look at the uh, vertical stabilizer. Let's let's model this one here. So we got one face here facing the top. So we can go to face mode and select this face. Okay. And we're going to just press E to extrude one small section here, right? And then press S. Okay, let's go to wireframe mode by pressing Z. I'm going to press S to scale it down until it matches the uh, the root of this uh, vertical stabilizer here. And uh, I just realized that I need to insert one edge loop here so that we can form the uh, the airfoil shape right on this particular stabilizer. And also maybe possibly insert another edge loop so that we can... Uh, later create on, create the rudder here. So I'm going to insert one edge loop, control R, and then just insert one edge loop. Maybe just let it flow right about here. Okay, so let's go to the top view and go back to shaded view. And here we need to move the vertices inwards. Now, if you want to slide the vertices along the edge, the command is shift V, then move the cursor over the edge, uh, the edge here, and then left mouse click to move it here. Shift V, click on the edge you want to slide along, and then just move it here. Shift V, then left mouse click on the vertices, and so on. And I'm going to do the same for this one. Shift V, and then just move it down like so. So you got a nice blended, rounded uh, cross section here. So when you extrude it, you'll have a nice uh, aerodynamic shape. So I'm going to go back to uh, face mode again. I'm going to select these faces. And I'm going to press E to extrude until I got the vertical stabilizer. I'm going to press Z again so that I can see through the uh, geometry. Then press R to rotate until this is flat. Then press S followed by Y to scale this down until it matches. Okay, I'm going to just press S followed by Y again until it matches the dimensions of this uh, drawing. So now you realize that, oh, this is a little bit too thick, so I'm going to press S followed by X to scale this down. I'm going to go to my top view. Okay, at the same time you notice that the uh, the, the faces are a little bit distorted, so I'm going to press S followed by Z along the Z axis, press 0 to flatten it. I'm going to go to top view. And again, because of my transformations, it looks a bit distorted. I'm going to press Z to go to shaded mode, and I'm going to fix the uh, cross section of this shape. So I'm going to go to uh, vertex mode, control tab, select vertex, and then just tweak the shape a little bit until I get the desired shape that I want. Okay, there you go. So nice and aerodynamic. And you're going to make this a little bit more aerodynamic. Select these two, or you can go to and select the edge here and push it back again. So it's got a nice round edge like so. Likewise for this, this outer edge here, and then push it back a little bit. It's got a very nice sharp uh, edge right now. Okay, so let's go to wireframe mode and see where the uh, rudder extends out. Now, there's a notch here, so now I wouldn't go into detail on how to create this notch. So I'm just going to insert one edge loop until it form a nice vertical edge here. So Control R, insert one edge loop here, until it ends here. So I want this edge, uh, edge loop to, uh, to follow this straight line here. So I'm going to use the vertex sliding along the, the uh, edge trick again. So select this vertex, Shift V, and slide it down here. And do the same for this one. And you notice that it flows down in this curve like that. So I'm going to do the same for these vertices. Shift V and then bring this down. Shift V and bring this down right about here. And later on, when you want to do final detailing, you can select these bunch of faces and uh, extract them out 
to form the rudder okay and then you can maybe cut cut a notch here to make it more accurate but meanwhile let's uh, finish the base model first so i'm going to select this top section here and i want to create this rounded area here so i'm just going to extrude one tiny section and i'm going to scale it down just a little bit like so insert one edge loop here okay and then just scale it out like so okay so i've got the tip rounded out so let's start to work with the wing which shouldn't be too difficult now we need to insert one edge loop okay let me show you press z so you can see now you, you notice carefully the wing has a very nice aerodynamic uh, rounded look to it and if you want it to be really really nice uh, you want to have the f uh, curvature to flow like that of the actual plane you, t you want you would want to try to make these uh, topology lines follow these lines as well so using the shift v trick again i'm going to just quickly adjust some of the points here so as to make it uh, follow the flow of the aircraft body select like the vertex shift v and then move your cursor to the edge that you want to slide and so on okay so now i need to insert one edge loop that cuts right across here so that i have enough detail to pull out the uh, airfoil shape of the wing so i press ctrl r to insert one edge loop that cuts right across the center here next i want to select the faces that form the uh, root of the wing so in this case uh, i can see that the root uh, just it comes out right about here this giant section here so i'm going to go to face mode and select these faces and these are going to form my wing okay so with this selected first of all you just press uh, now you can use a very uh, useful tool called the inset now I'm going to tell you where to turn it on so under your file user preferences under the add-ons under the mesh make sure you turn on these uh, this tool inset polygon make sure this check is on okay B surface so is also another great tool, but I won't be showing you here. Loop tools, fantastic tool. Uh, I use it quite a lot, so uh, keep that turned on as well. But uh, make sure the inset polygon is turned on. So with that turned on, and with all these faces selected, you can press W to bring up your specials key, and then choose inset, inset faces. So when you select inset, it, it sort of does an extrusion, but with the inset on, you can move your cursor left and right and you can see that it is actually creating another duplicate uh, extruded face within the same plane area okay so this can be very very useful when you are uh, doing this type of modeling so now I've created an internal set of faces now I need to adjust these bits so that it follows the flow okay I'm just holding down the shift button to select the additional points so now you can see I have a nice rounded airfoil shape which I'm trying to follow as best I can to the uh, the shape of this uh, the cross section here so now I'm gonna go to select the actual face that I'll be extruding so I will do some like adjustments here Just being a little bit nitpicky here. All right, so uh, this one. Okay, this, by the way, is the first time modeling this jet plane. So, or rather, this rocket plane. So now I'm selecting the side faces here. So to make sure you select it, make sure you uh, hover your cursor over the dot representing the faces. So now I have selected the airfoil shape. I want to extrude a small section. So uh, to to reference myself, I'm going to create another window. I'm going to press N to hide. Uh, sorry, press T to hide the tools window. And then I'm going to change this view to the front view. So you can see very clearly, when you extrude the section, it's going to taper down until to this thickness. So I'm going to press, with these faces selected, press E to extrude a section. Right, right about, okay, maybe halfway between the taper. And then I'm going to press S to scale it along the Z-axis. 
Okay. And then I'm going to try this. I'm going to scale it along the x-axis until this is completely flat. So press S followed by X, then press 0 until it's flat. And then you can just move this out a little bit, like so. You can press E one more time for another section to form the, the root of the jet. Okay, and then scale it down until it matches the thickness. Now when you're scaling, make sure you are set to median point. And notice that as I scale it down to match the thickness, because I've created the airfoil shape nicely, it actually matches the uh, the actual cord of the wing, or rather the cross section of the wing here. Okay, I don't even I I guess if I go to the top view, it should match the thickness. Well, sort of. Okay, because I need to adjust the tail section here. Okay, but I'm pretty close. All right. So let me just fix this area here first by going back to edge uh, view. Then Alt right mouse click to select this edge loop. So notice the edge loop now is entirely selected. Then I'm going to press S followed by Y to scale this down. And I'm going to adjust this until it matches the... Okay, okay. I'm going to use the side view here as Z to match it as well. Okay, so I'm going to fix this face as well because the thickness doesn't match. So go to front view, go to face mode. Press A to deselect. Press A a couple of times to deselect everything. Press B to box select these bunch of faces here. I'm going to go to the top view again. S followed by Y to scale it down, and then just maneuver this until it matches the thickness. Okay, I'm going to select this edge loop here. Okay, I should turn on the top view just now. But anyway. Okay, and I realize that the top view here, I need to adjust these vertices as well. Okay, so in order to pull this thing until it matches the curve, I'm going to turn on this proportional editing. Turn on connected. Okay, and I'm going to change the uh, proportional editing fall off to sphere. And I'm going to grab this side of vertex, vertex here and press G to just... And remember to roll your mouse to adjust the area of influence. Just pull it out until it matches the cross section. Okay, I'm just gonna. Okay, so this one definitely needs to be pulled out a little bit more. Top view, and then press G. I'm gonna reduce the area of influence. Okay, <coughs> so I've sort of fixed the area here. Uh, we can tweak this area later on. But now I'm satisfied with the wing cross section here so now I'm going to select these bunch of faces again and I'm, that's where I'm going to pull out the rest of the wing so go back to my top view and I, the rest should be quite uh, straightforward let me just split another uh, window and I'm going to change this one to my front view now so I'm going to press 1 okay the thickness here needs to be adjusted so I'm going to go to my edge view here S followed by Z. Okay, my proportional is still on. I'm going to turn it off. S followed by Z. And K. I'm going to select this edge loop here. Okay, and I just pull out slightly. Bingo. Okay, go to vertex mode. Oh, let's go to face mode and press B and select the faces here. So now we're ready to extrude until it reaches the end of the wing. Okay, so press E to extrude until it reaches the end. Okay, maybe just before the tip because we want to create a rounded tip. Okay, I'm going to press uh, Z over here to show you in wireframe mode. Press Ctrl Z to go back to your last uh, selected faces. Okay, and then uh, scale it down by pressing S, scale it down. So I'm going to scale in the median point, and then just move this back slightly until it matches the wing. So I'm going to scale this up slightly a little bit, scale it along the z-axis to taper it down. And then to create this uh, wing tip, I'm just going to press press E to extrude another section. Okay, right, maybe right about there, and then. Uh, or maybe all the way to the tip here and then scale it along the y-axis 
okay and then press ctrl r again insert another edge loop of course this is not the most ideal way okay if you want to get a really rounded way okay there's another way to do that but that will probably take much longer to do so but uh, essentially uh, this this model the base model is is done all right and uh, what you can do now is that you can start to uh, break out the pieces for the canopy you can do detailing for the canopy and uh, even cut out the entire section here and to start to detail it okay so in terms of uh, the amount of geometry this is still pretty low you can still adjust this until to your own satisfaction and uh, in certain areas like fine-tuning this curve here you can insert another edge loop Control R insert one edge loop here and then going on to vertex mode and manually tweaking uh, the surfaces until it matches the entire curvature of the plane all right so uh, essentially this is how you model the uh, Comet 163 so I hope I've shown you a lot of uh, enough basic tricks to attempt to model this plane yourself and I, I really like the the Messerschmitt 163 because it is really a very uh, simple aircraft and uh, because of its basic shape it should be a very easy subject for uh, the novice or the beginner modeler to try out so I'll encourage you to give this a shot now uh, I'm going to apply a uh, smooth modifier okay and I'm just gonna just take a look what happens when you smooth it out so it actually looks pretty good pretty close to the uh, the actual model itself granted uh, there's still a lot of uh, fine-tuning that you need to do okay so let me just smooth this out to see what it looks like so yeah so there you have it this is how you model the uh, Messerschmitt 163 Comet okay so I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, give it a try thanks for watching